Hey there teachers, welcome back to another video. If you're new to the channel, my name's Mark, I'm a high school math teacher. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about what can you do and what should you do in the first two weeks of teaching any new class, or even if it's an old class that you're teaching in a brand new year, what can you do in just two weeks to ensure that that class can turn into your dream class? My dream class consists of students who are respectful and kind, who are ready to learn every single lesson, right? Like they come with their pens, their pencils, their calculator, any device that they need. Students who want to come to maths. They love maths and they're excited for our class. Even if they don't love maths, I want them to look at their timetable and go, oh yeah, Mr. O'Donoghue's his class, he's all right. And lastly, I like my kids to be good at banter, to be a little bit personable, be able to have a chat with me. And that's my dream class. Now, your dream class, of course, may differ from mine. Maybe you want your kids to be silent at all times. I don't know. But the question remains, how do you go about doing that in the first two weeks? How do you go about getting your dream class in just two weeks? So I think one of the big things that I've learned across my career is that in the first two weeks of class or in the first two weeks of teaching, kids are kind of trying to figure you out. They're trying to figure out what your teaching style is. They're trying to figure out how strict you are, what you'll let slide, what you won't. And more or less, they're just trying to figure out how they're supposed to behave in your class. Now, they're not doing this for any malicious reason, for the most part. Most of them are just trying to figure out what they're supposed to do. What are your expectations of them at the start of the year so that they can know how to behave when they come to your class? Because the thing is, kids crave more than anything, structure and order. Now, it seems counterintuitive because a lot of kids... Anytime you give them any structure, like two lines outside my class, you get a lot of eye rolls. You go, oh, sir, it's too hot. Can we just go in? And they, they make it seem like they don't want order and structure. But in reality, students and honestly, adults as well, we love order and structure. We love knowing what to expect. I mean, for example, most of us have a GP, a doctor that we go to every single time. It's very unlikely that you go to a brand new doctor every single time as in you don't care which doctor you get because usually you go to a doctor and then the second time you need to go to, go to a doctor, you go, um, well, I know what to expect from the first one, so I'm going to go back there. Why would you put yourself through that stress and anxiety? I don't know if everyone else gets stressed and anxious about it, but I get stressed and anxious about going to see a doctor. So I'm just going to go back to the same person every single time because I know what to expect. It's the exact same thing with your classroom. Kids get put at ease and they feel way more calm and confident when they can come into your classroom and know exactly your ways of working and what you expect of them. So my first big tip in the first two weeks of teaching is set your expectations that you've always dreamed of. So if your expectation is that kids are silent while you're talking and you're teaching, you set that expectation early. If you want them to line up outside your classroom, you set that expectation early. If when you're doing the role, you say, good morning, Jason, and you want Jason to say, good morning, sir, back to you, you set that expectation early. And the thing with expectations is you need to make them explicit. It's not really good enough for you to just expect them. The kids need to know what they are. Remember, they crave that structure and that order. They crave knowing what to expect. So, not only do you need to tell them, my expectation, guys, is that when I say good morning to you, when I'm doing the role, you say good morning back. You tell them that's your expectation, but I don't know, also make a poster somewhere in the room. For example, I have my five expectations on the side of my uh, whiteboard right next to where I'm teaching and the kids can see it every single lesson. And honestly, it's really useful because if a kid breaks one of my expectations, I can gesture to the expectation that I set out in the first lesson and remind them that's my expectation and that they've broken it. Now, the second tip that I've got kind of carries on straight from that first one. And it's that you have to demand and expect excellence from your kids in the first two weeks. So if you set the expectation that no students are talking while you're talking, and a student starts talking while you're talking, you need to pull that up right away. You need to remind the student that it is not okay for them to be talking while you're talking because it's distracting for you and it makes it harder to teach and it's distracting for all the other students in the class who are trying to listen. You have to demand excellence, not just good enough. The reason for this is that students are going to, at most, rise to your expectation. Sometimes students will fall short of it. Look, that's just natural, but they're not going to exceed your expectation very often. Very rarely will a student go above and beyond what you expect of them. So if you want the students to be silent when you're talking, you need to demand silence when you're talking. If you settle for good enough, students are gonna realize good enough is the limit 
and sometimes reach good enough, but most of the time reach not good enough. And I've found that in my own teaching career. When I get slack and when I start letting things go that I wouldn't normally, the students stop reaching my excellent expectation. And so they start falling below it. And I start to get kids talking while I'm talking and being disrespectful. And it's not their fault. It's just the fact that I haven't set the right expectation and I haven't demanded excellence. So the first two things, set your expectations, whatever you want, and then demand excellence. Now, the third thing I want to talk about is something that is often not really talked about in teaching, and that is trust. You have to demonstrate to students that you can be trusted. Trust is not something that is freely given. You have to earn the student's trust. Now, what do I mean by trust? Well, what I mean is things like if a student has a question in class, you have to acknowledge that question and you need to do your best to answer it. You cannot pass off the question as unimportant. Tell them that you'll get back to them later, but never get back to them. This is only going to make students feel like you're not really there for them and that they can't trust you to be their teacher and help them out. You also need to take feedback on board. So if a student says, sir, you're going too quickly, you need to actually slow down. You can't just say to the student, no, you just need to keep up. You're not paying attention. Maybe it's true, but you need to actively say, okay, the students aren't able to keep up. I do need to actually slow down my teaching so that they can keep on track. I find a really great way to build trust with my students in the first two weeks, especially is to simply just go above and beyond for them. So if a kid has a question in class and you answer it there and then, that's great. If you can't answer it there and then, you absolutely have to go and find the answer for them. Go above and beyond, do the research that, you know, the students should do themselves, but if you go above and beyond and do it, the students are gonna trust you a lot. You also just have to like be a prepared and good teacher for the students. Now, I'm not saying you have to be an amazing teacher because often I'm targeting these videos at beginning teachers or even teachers who haven't started teaching yet. So I'm not saying you have to be an excellent teacher per se, but I just mean like you have to be prepared for your lessons. So if you go into those first few lessons and you're saying to the students, all right, so this is where you're going to find all the lessons. I've prepared them for you for the first two weeks. You're going to find the textbook resource at this website. I'm going to help you get set up. Has anyone got any IT issues that I can help you fix right now? Can I get you connected to the internet? If you do all these things for the students, you show that you're prepared. You show that you're willing to help them they're going to start trusting you more and more. And that's going to be a really good foundation for the rest of the year to get them kind of do whatever you want them to do. Speaking of trust, if you're this far in this video, I assume that you trust me enough to be giving you valid and helpful and actionable teaching advice. If that's the case and you're enjoying this video, make sure you click that like button. I really appreciate it and consider subscribing so you don't miss out on any future videos. Thanks. And similar to trust and building trust, you need to demand their respect, but not through your words, right? No one's going to respect a teacher who says, I'm the teacher, you have to respect me, you should be listening to what I say, rah, 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 rah. But but you can demand their respect through your actions. And there's some simple ways to get their respect in just the first two weeks. The easiest one and the most powerful one is to simply learn their names. So many teachers I've heard from students don't know their names even after six, eight, ten weeks of teaching them. Hell, the kids don't even learn their teachers' names for the most part. But if you can learn the name of every single kid in your class in just that first week, they're going to notice that. If they're coming in at the start of their second week and they're walking through the door and you're saying, good morning, Tom, good morning, Evie, good morning, Jordan, good morning, Joseph, they're going to go, wow, so knows our names already? That's pretty incredible. And it's honestly not that hard. And you might be saying, Mark, I'm really bad at remembering names. How am I ever supposed to remember 100 kids' names? Suck it up, I guess. You're a teacher. Go home and study them. I'm sorry, but there's there's really no excuse for not knowing your students' names after a whole entire week of teaching them. The only reason you wouldn't know their names is because you're not trying to remember them. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That might get some dislikes, but it's the absolute truth. You should know the kids' names after just one week. And on top of that, you should go ahead and try and learn something about each kid in that first one or two weeks. This is a super way to earn their respect because if you can walk around class while the kids are working and just say, hey, Tom, how was your footy game on the weekend? Did you guys win? Oh, bummer. No, you lost. Okay. Oh, well, sucks, mate. Next weekend, you got them. You got them. Hey, Josie, how are you going? How's, um, How's the violin going? Still practicing? Have you learned that song that I asked you to learn? No? Okay, well, you should. It's a great song. You'll love it. You'll love it. Hey, how's that drama going? You're doing that play? Have you learned your lines yet? 
you get my point, right? You go around to the kids and you let them know that you know a little bit about them. It lets the students feel seen and feel heard and it builds trust and it builds respect. It's super powerful. And the last thing about respect that I want to talk about is counterintuitively, you will earn the respect of the students if you follow through on your threats, right? Threats is a pretty nasty word. I prefer to say follow through with consequences when they don't meet your expectations because that's really what it is. But if you say to students, hey, if you continue to talk while I'm talking, while I'm teaching, you're going to get five minutes detention after class. If you say that, you kind of have to do it because old mate, he's going to keep talking again. Remember, they're testing your boundaries, trying to find where what they can get away with. When they cross that boundary again, you say, look, that's five minutes after class and you hold them to it. They're not going to really like it, at least not the kid who you've just punished and he's sitting there writing lines for you after class or whatever your punishment is. doesn't have to be detention. But that kid is probably going to go, oh, F that teacher. He sucks. Oh, I hate going to that class so much. But deep down and subconsciously, it's going to build respect. Okay, At the very least, in all of the other students in class who see that you set an expectation, you set a consequence for not hitting it, and then when a kid didn't hit it, you followed through with that consequence. It builds upon that idea that kids crave structure and order and they really want to know what to expect in your class. So if you're the kind of teacher who sometimes gives out detentions for something and then other times you don't and then other times you go way overboard with the consequence and sometimes you let them off with a slap on the wrist, the kids don't know what to expect and they don't know how to behave. If you do the same consequence for the same action every single time, the kids are going to learn quick smart, A, don't do it, <laughs> But they're going to learn that you're the kind of teacher who will follow through with what you say, whether that is issuing a consequence or if you say, I'm going to go find that out for you, I can help you. They're going to believe that, they're going to trust you, they're going to respect you. Now, speaking of students asking questions, one of the biggest fears that a lot of pre-service and beginning teachers have is, what do I do if a student asks a question and I don't know the answer to it? It's a pretty intimidating situation to be in, it can create a lot of stress, but fear not, I've got a video about that exact topic on my channel. Make sure you click on the video card here. Thanks for tuning into this one and I'll see you over there.